Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm going to share some simple ways that you can alter a sketch design and tell you all about how you can win a gift certificate from the Hip Kit Club. There are two challenges in the Hip Kit Facebook group. Each month you can participate in these challenges for a chance to win a $25 gift certificate to the Hip Kit site. This week I'm creating a page based on the March sketch. This is a beautiful wreath design with a water wash background, a photo, and a large title. Personally, I love using sketches. They're a great starting point and can be easily altered. For example, if you're not a mixed media person, you could recreate the look of the paint swishes with paper strips or stamped images. If your photo won't work with the flowers, you could use buttons or shapes or a collage of stickers. You could even create the wreath out of photos. I'm going to do quite a few alterations to this sketch because I want to show you how versatile they are. I will be using this spring floral cut file from Hip Kit Club. As you can see, it's not a complete wreath, but I'm going to show you how you can create a wreath-like look with this image. Along with the cut file, I'll be using the main kit, the embellishment kit, the inks in the color kit, and the nested arches die. I'll list all of the items in the description below, along with a link to the cut file. I'm going to pop that sketch right back onto the screen because I want you to see where the inspiration for this design comes from. There is a large circle in the center that's been formed by the wreath. I'm going to use a smaller circle that I've cut from pattern paper. This lovely spring floral cut file is going to sit right over here, creating the look of the partial wreath. Now I have the look of a wreath, just like the sketch. I'm also going to use a single photo. I'm going to place that right here near the lower part of the circle. I'm also going to be adding a title below it. To make this look more wreath-like, I'm going to bring in a few flowers. But first, I want to create that water wash look in my background. I've already prepped my cardstock with gesso, which is something I always do when I'm using water-based media. To create the water wash background, I'm going to use a really simple ink smushing technique with periwinkle and splash colored ink. Periwinkle is a core ink from the February color kit and Splash is a reactive ink from the January color kit. The reactive ink is going to act a little different when we mix it with water, but that's only going to enhance our color layers even more. I'm going to press each of these ink pads onto a silicone mat and spritz a little bit of water on the top. Most people use plastic wrap for ink smushing, but I prefer wax paper. It gives me a little more control over the placement of the ink. I've also discovered that wax paper creates more texture in the design, and I really like how that looks. If you're one who struggles with the imperfections of mixed media, you can recreate this look with stamps. The January color kit includes a collection of splatter stamps that would be a perfect alternative for recreating this look. I started with the lighter color. This is the reactive ink, and as it dries, you're going to see multiple shades of color in the pattern. It is reacting with water, creating a softer appearance in some areas and a deeper shade in others. The darker core ink creates more of a monotone design. It adds a lovely layer of color over the brighter blue. By combining these two distinct inks, I can achieve a range of color variations. As I finish adding this ink to the page, I would love it if you tap that subscribe button and let me know that you're new here. If you're already a subscriber, let me know that you're enjoying today's video by tapping the thumbs up icon or leaving me a comment below. I would love to know if you're going to try this technique on your next page. I have created some really big splashes of color, but I need some smaller splatters to build on the layers. 
I'm adding more water to the ink so that I can create large splatters of color. Using less water creates smaller splatters in tightly clustered patterns. It's easier to control and allows you to choose where you want the splatter. If you add more water, like I did, there's less control. The pools of color drip and splash in a larger area, and this ink will change color as it dries. All right, this is going to need to dry for a moment, and then we can start adding items to the page. Before I place this floral cut on my page, I want to back it with vellum. This is a simple way to fill a cut file and it adds an elegant look to a design. When I back a cut file like this, I often trim off these little stems and floral bits. They're very difficult to line up. The vellum doesn't really need to sit here, so I just trim them off and save myself a little bit of time and frustration. The solid image is not included with the cut file. I use the contour tool in Cricut Design Space to make this. If you would like to learn how I did that, let me know in the comments and I'll explain it a little bit more. As I'm adhering my layers in place, I made the decision to alter my original design. I was inspired by the sketch to create a wreath of florals. And I feel like the florals are going to look better on the right side of the page. All right, let's go ahead and bring in those floral pieces. These rolled flowers come with the main hip kit. I'm going to use the pink flowers and the teal colored leaves for my page. Each of the flower petals are a little bit different, which is going to give you a different look on your three dimensional flowers. Last week, Kimberly shared a live tutorial in the HipKit Facebook group where she showed you how to make each of the flowers. Her technique was really simple and easy to follow. I'm also going to share my technique. It is a little different, but the results are basically the same. I like to ink the petals of my flowers first. To do this, I'm using a mini blending brush and the Ultra Pink ink from the February Color Kit. This is going to make the tips of the petals darker than the centers and give them a little dimension. You can also lightly sand your cardstock and create a distressed look. You could add white ink to the edges to lighten them or create a grungier look with brown or black ink. Once the petals have been inked, I'm going to bring in a flower shaping tool and a foam mat. This round tool is great for creating curved petals and it starts to curl your flower, making rolling go a lot easier. So you can see that this tool has already lessened some of my rolling work. I'm going to start on this end here and roll inwards. You can use a pair of tweezers like these, but I find it difficult to hold them closed while I roll the petals. I prefer to use a reverse grip tweezers or a quilling tool. Now quilling tools are a little more difficult to find and if you're not into quilling, they're more of a unitasker. Tweezers on the other hand are common and you probably have a pair of these lying around somewhere in your craft room. Once I get to the end of rolling, I'm going to add a dollop of glue to this flat circle here. Then I'll flip over the petals and hold everything in place till the glue dries. Once the glue set, you can spread the petals a bit and you have a three dimensional flower. I'm going to finish the rest of these off camera and start building my wreath. This is going to be a combination of flat sticker flowers and the larger three dimensional ones. I'm using the flatter flowers as my background images, then I'll layer the others over the top. Now I'm going to admit that this project took me way longer than it should have. I was really struggling to create a balanced design when I first started. Has this ever happened to you? When it does, I have to take a few steps back and remind myself to stick to the basics. First off, simpler is always best. I don't need to fill that whole wreath with flowers. 
My daughter taught me some basic rules of floral design. She told me that clusters of colors, different shapes, and a single statement flower make great arrangements. Scrapbook pages also need grounding elements. And near the lower part of the page, I brought in a chipboard piece, a little sentiment, and a butterfly. I chose to bring in that dark color because I suddenly remembered the rule of gallon quart ratios. I was adding quite a few colors to this page, but I hadn't decided on a color palette beforehand. Narrowing down my color choices and remembering some of these simple principles made the process go much faster. Once my head was back in the right space, I added some additional pieces to the top of the page. After layering those two branding strips in place, I ran my page through my sewing machine. I created a simple stitched frame and a zigzag across the two product strips. Again, I chose to keep it simple here with a pink puffy banner, a soft green heart, a butterfly, and a few florals. The last element I want to add is a title on the lower part of my page. I'm going to bring in a floral puffy sticker that says, All of me loves all of you. Below that, I'm going to create the word forever out of puffy letter stickers. I chose to spell it F-U-R like puppy fur instead of F-O-R to create more of a play on words. I'm going to finish this up with a few more elements and then I'll share the completed page with you. At the beginning of the project, I shared the hip kit challenge sketch with you. I'm going to pop that back onto the screen so that I can show you how it inspired me. I loved that brushed pattern in the background, so I replicated it with an ink smooshing technique. I didn't cover the whole page, but you can still see those colors peek out from behind my elements. I do have a circular shape and an abstract wreath design. I used a floral cut file on the left and some brighter florals on the right. My design is quite a bit smaller, but that gave me an opportunity to add a cute cluster of elements up here at the top of the page. Like the sketch, I have a single photo with layers behind it, some florals, three butterflies, as well as a title at the base of the page. I was also inspired by the stitching design, so I replicated that with my sewing machine. Even though my page looks quite a bit different than the sketch, I was still able to use it as an inspirational piece and create a beautiful design. That's how sketches work. You can choose to create them as is or be inspired by a few elements in the design. If you enjoy using sketches, then you should join the HipKit Facebook group and take part in our monthly challenge for a chance to win a $25 gift certificate to the HipKit site. For those of you who are already members of the group, don't forget to add your entry to the comments of the challenge post before Sunday, March 31st at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's only one submission per person and layouts cannot be submitted to multiple hip kit challenges. I want to thank you for joining me for another scrapbook project. If you'd like to see more of my designs, you can visit my channel or follow Miss Carrie's Creations online. If you have any questions about this project or supplies listed below, feel free to leave me a comment. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.